Hello! I am Sarospa, and today I shall be your humble guide through Final Fantasy IV. When we last left off, we had gotten our asses beat by a door, and we were grinding in order to teach Rosa the wall spell. Um, as promised, I am coming to you with uh, something to talk about. Uh, I decided, since this is always a fascinating topic, uh, why don't we talk about bugs in this game? I uh, went ahead and compiled a list of a few that looked especially juicy. Uh, so uh, I have I have notes on them right here on my screen. So I can just kind of uh, discuss those while I uh, murder bats. And hopefully I won't get too distracted that I do anything stupid. Uh, so the first bug that I want to talk about is, um, I figured we'd start with the biggest whopper, and if you know anything about, uh, Final Fantasy IV bugs, you've probably heard of this one, cause, uh, it, uh, it's, it's pretty significant. It's called the 64 door hierarchy glitch, um, and it basically works like this. Uh, so when you walk through a door, or an exit of some kind in Final Fantasy IV. Um, basically, what it does is one of two things. Depending on uh, whether the exit is designated as a go type or a return type, um, a. Back in text. Uh, a, a go type will save the location that you left from, so, um, you know, so if you walk, if you go from the overworld and you enter a town, um, and then you walk into, you know, uh, someone's house, both of those exits, uh, will be go types, and so, uh, it will be the position in the overworld that you left it from will be saved, and the position that you left the town from into the person's house will be saved, and the exit out of their house will be a return type, and it will place you right back uh, when you where you left off in the town, and then leaving the town will also be a return type, um, and so then it will place you back on the overworld that you left off from. Um, and so basically the way it does this is it just has a series of locations in memory um, that it keeps track of using uh, a room level. So when you when it saves a location of uh, when it saves the location of a, of a certain place that you are at, uh, it it increments the room level by one. So then when you return. It goes back, it subtracts one from the room level, and, uh, and then, so that way it can find what, uh, it can find what your, uh, location was at the time. So, you know, that, that basically makes sense, I, th I think. Uh, I don't know if I explained it that well, but you can kind of see how, how it fits together. You just, it just kind of stacks up you know, one after the other places you've been, and then when you go back, it unstacks and then looks looks at where you've been and be like, okay, I'll put you here. Um, and that mostly works. Uh, the place where it kind of works less well is uh, when you find an exit that is go type in both directions. Uh, and there are a few exits in the game that actually work like that. Um, in particular, uh, some of the staircases in the Dwarf Castle, uh, and I think the reason it works that way is, I don't know if you've noticed, but you can actually go in a complete loop around the castle, um, so there's no there's no obvious way to make uh, to make it a a go and return because you if you went in the went back uh, around in the wrong direction, you were going kind of against the flow. Uh, and you were going through returns, uh, that would be weird. It wouldn't make any sense. So it's just, I guess the way they dealt with that, or maybe it was a bug that it was left that way, but um, exits 
Uh, I think all the staircases in that area are, you know, you go, if, with that, whichever direction you go through, it's a go type. Um, and that's, you know, that's more or less, it more or less works, because then, you know, the game will remember, um, when you, you know, if you, if you go back, um, it'll remember that, where you've been. Um, and so if you, like, if the one other way that it uses, uh, it makes use of the system is if, if you cast the warp spell, um, that sends you back to the last room you were in, so that, that is, especially it's a portable return type exit. Um, so even if there isn't a return type exit in the room you're in, you can still return to the last place you were by casting warp, I think. I think that's how it works. We've been getting small crops of bats, haven't we? Um, but yeah, hopefully I'm explaining this well. So this is just kind of the setup. This this is the, the state of the game that makes it possible to kind of achieve weird things. Um, so the next ingredient that makes this bug possible is the fact that uh, when you get to room level 64, uh, which wouldn't normally be possible, um, because most areas are not 64 deep, um, but you can, of course, do this by going back and forth through exits that are both go-type. Um, and if you get to 64, um, the problem is that the number that tracks what room level you're in only goes up to 63. Uh, so you can see where problems may start to crop up if, uh, if this is abused. Um, basically, uh... The way that numbers work in computers is when you count past the highest number you can count to, usually it just rolls over to zero, and that's called overflow. And when you get overflow, weird things can happen. Um, basically, when you're at room level zero, the game assumes, uh, and rightly so most of the time, that you're on the world map. I mean, that only makes sense. You wouldn't expect room level zero to ever end you up anywhere else. How would that even happen? Well, this would be an example of how. Um, and if you use a return type uh, exit when you're room level zero, uh, which normally wouldn't be possible since you'd be on the world map, um, then you can go into room level negative one. And that's a bad thing. That's pretty bad. Uh, because you're not supposed to do that. Um, and when you get into room, uh, room level negative one, things, weird things begin happening. Um, because the game will start checking your location on the basis of things that aren't really s proper locations, and it will start sending you weird places. Uh, and then you can actually use this to go backwards even further, go deeper into the negatives, and this can allow you to actually teleport places in very convoluted methods that you're not supposed to be able to get to yet. Um, so, to, to explain this a little further, and since we're passing the time. I may as well. Um, I, I want to go into kind of the deeper technicals of this, and uh, if that if that sounds boring to you, you know, the technicals of uh, com computer programming, then I don't know. You you can kind of zone out or something. Um, just just watch the uh, the numbers on the screen go up. Uh, but no, um, basically, if you think of computer programs on a very deep level. Um, on the level that they were basically working with uh, at the time, at the time that you know when they made these cartridges, Super Nintendo and Nintendo, is basically is a big list of numbers. Um, and you may wonder how does a big list of numbers uh, do things, make things appear on on the screen? Um, and that basically boils down to what is called the pointer. Um, and the pointer, um, basically, 
is a little bit of memory that keeps track of where in the list you are. Um, and so when you run program code, you basically, um, you know, certain numbers will tell the hardware to do something. Um, and usually this involves moving the pointer around or changing the parts of the list in some way or changing numbers in hardware. Um, so, you know, that's the, the, the game's working memory, you know, while it's running is also a list of numbers and it can change those around and, and stuff like that. And so, you know, one such list of numbers is actually the color codes for the pixels that are drawn on screen. Um, so, you know, that's how you can begin to draw things on the screen and such, and I'm, I'm probably oversimplifying it a bit, but that's the basic idea, is you just have a list of numbers, and then the actual, you know, the physical stuff, the hardware, um, figures out how to do things with it. Um, and because this is the way it works, you know, you have your pointer, and the pointer will just get to, get to a certain number, and it'll the number will tell it to do something, or, uh, you know, and you can have, um, programs, you know, code within the, within it, made up of these list of numbers that tells the pointer to go somewhere and do something with the numbers there, um, so, you know, like, if I, if I go into an item screen and I use an item, um, Probably what is happening under the hood is that uh, when, when I when I tell it to use the item, basically a part of it is saying um, send the pointer to this place, and this will tell you what to do with the item. And then it goes through that, and it you know, plays the sound effects, and it gives an effect, and it runs the code, uh, and then it comes back, and then the game will continue telling the pointer where to go, and, and things appear. And so, um, generally, the way this works is when you send a pointer to go do something to a piece of a piece of data, you generally assume that you know what's going to be there. If I tell it go do something to this place and you know, use this as an item, you'll, um, I generally assume that where I'm sending it is going to be code for an item. It's not going to be sound, or the data for a room, um, or a pic part of a picture. If that were the case, really weird things might start to happen. Um, and so basically, um, that's the same thing that's going on here, is the room level is just pointing to a place that the game wants to check, you know this, you know, start at this part, and then, like, room level zero is, like, the beginning of the list, and then room one, room level one is one, one further in the list, and so then you just have a, you know, a list of little bits of data, and those are locations in the game that it uses to, to make sure it knows where you are, um, and so when it starts going backwards into the negatives, then it's going into parts of the game that aren't actually locations. I don't know what they are. They'd be something else, but the game... Once you start going into the negatives, you know, there's no, there's really no way to check for this. For this. Like I said, it's all just lists. It's stuff. Um, there's no, like, s special thing that tells you, uh, this is a picture, this is a sound. Um, at least not not at this low level, not at uh, our programming as elementary as what was done on these consoles. So it's got to interpret it as uh, as a as a room location. And uh, what kind of things happen when a game is forced to take something that isn't what it thinks it is and interpret it that way? It interpret it as something that it, that it isn't. Um, one side effect of that is uh, another bug you may recognize, known as uh, Missing No from Pokemon, um, is the result of some bit of code sending uh, 
sending the pointer to the wrong place and saying, this is a Pokemon. Uh, and then, of course, horrible uh, Lovecraftian nightmares spring forth onto your console. Um, so that's the kind of thing that we're talking about with the 64-door hierarchy glitch, um, is very strange things can happen. Uh, I've seen it myself. Um, you can go watch a YouTube video of it if you're interested in this kind of thing. Uh, it's really weird, although uh, the video I found where it, it basically I think they use it to warp through and beat the game, so d don't, don't watch too far into that because they It'll be spoilers. Uh, I guess if you w don't care about spoilers, you can go see it, but just be warned that if you start digging into this, uh, it's I think it's worth seeing if you haven't. Um, but spoilers will be present, so if that's a concern, you can wait till you watch the rest of this LP, and then uh, then you can you know, see what see what it's all about. But uh, it really is worth taking a look at because it is very strange. Um, so I, th I think that pretty much covers the 64-door hierarchy glitch. Uh, I, I pretty much covered it in depth. I've, I've really, uh, this was, I think this was a good idea, because I've really keyed into my, uh, my rambling sense. Um, has allowed me to expound at length and really fill a space. So I think we're, a, we're in a good place here. And that's good, because Rosalie gained a l another level and she learned no spells. Uh, for the record, she has um, the the official spell list, which I read from, um, said that she learns it at level 35, which is a ways off. That uh, that that's slightly unfortunate. However, this is uh, easy type, and uh, it's not easy type, but it's, it's basically it's it's it has been changed to be easier. Um, and she has consistently learned her spells a little bit earlier than has been listed. Um, so I was hoping she would learn her next spell on this level, and then reflect on level 32. Um, that is not happening, but she will learn it within four levels, which, uh, at the rate we're going, that, that might be a full episode. Uh, I don't think it will take that long, I th but we're looking at at least two levels because she didn't learn her next spell. Um, unless, I guess, she learns a, two spells at once, but I'm not going to hold out for that. Uh, that seems somewhat unlikely. But, um... That's just kind of, you know, checking in, keeping up with, uh... what we are doing here. Um... What's actually going on in the game. Um... So, I guess I'll move on to the next glitch. Um, and this one's a fair bit simpler, um, and in fact concerns the wall spell, flex spell. I'm never sure whether to refer to it by its, by its real name or by the name it was given in this version, but, you know, wall. You'll know what I'm talking about. Um, so this is concerns bosses that change forms in battle, um, like the mom bomb, you remember that one? Uh, the, uh, dark elf who turned into a dragon, um... You can actually stop bosses from taking their second form if they have one. Um, and the reason that this works is because of the fact that the second form is a counter. Um, and by a counter, I mean, as you might guess, um, it goes off when you, in response to you doing something to it. Um, so I think it's like, you know, a counter, it's like after you're hit check if you have this much hit points, and if you do, do this thing. Um, but, uh, you m might remember when I was first explaining how wall works, that you can't bounce a wall, you can't bounce a spell off a wall twice. Um, and that is true, but it is an oversimplification of how it actually, how, how it actually works. Um, in order to prevent a spell from potentially bouncing off of two walls forever, um, the game causes uh, a spell that has been bounced off of wall to trigger no counters at all, and basically wall is set up as a special counter um, that you know, affects spells. Um, 
So you can see where this is going. If Ball cancels out a counter and the boss's second form is triggered by a counter, then a spell that has been bounced off a wall will not cause the boss to enter its second form. And um, this, this is an issue because the final boss has a second form, so you can actually use this glitch to significantly lower the uh, length of the final boss battle. So that is um, a little a little bit awkward, I would say. Um, it's it's a, a less than positive outcome, I suppose. Um, you know, uh, one thing you'll find is that if you really dig um, RPGs of this sort, uh, because they're such complex games, they'll have a lot of bugs. Uh, very interesting bugs, a lot of them. Um, if you just look through all the history of Final Fantasy, like, look down the list of all the games in the series and what all the bugs they have, it's super interesting. Um, and you can find all kinds of fascinating ways to break reality inside these, uh, these, these, uh, small worlds here. Very interesting stuff. Uh, especially in the days of Super Nintendo and Nintendo, um, you know, you had limited memory space, and you were programming basically on, uh, um, assembly code. Uh, very low-level stuff. You had to kind of uh, take shortcuts, like the whole go-return thing I was talking about. Uh, when you take shortcuts, there are flaws sometimes in them. Um, they tend to sometimes, you know... Basically, if you can find a way to send a pointer bouncing wildly through the, uh, through the game's code, that's when things start to get really crazy, and you can do that in quite a few games uh, if you know what you're doing. Um, you know, uh, so, it's, it's very interesting, uh, and continuing on the theme that of, uh, of, um, bugs that are relevant to what's going on, right, you know, what we're doing right now, um, there is the sealed cave glitch, yes, there is a glitch concerning the very dungeon we're in right now. Or, uh, to put it a different way, it concerns completely skipping this dungeon, um, which, you know, at the moment I am not entirely uh, un uh, unsympathetic to that uh, to that possibility. But I've already passed up the opportunity to do that, so I don't think it's going to happen. Um, so how do you skip the sealed cave? Well. Uh, basically, so when, uh, when Rydia first joins your party in the crystal room, uh, behind the, uh, King Gaet's throne, um, there is a slight flaw in, in how that, uh, that, that general part of the game is structured, because when you leave it, uh, when you leave that room, and you go back to King Gaet, and you talk to him, uh, and then, you know, that, that cutscene finishes up. Um, you can then cast Warp uh, with Rydia, which, uh, as, I, as I've talked about, returns you to the last place you were at. And the last place you were at, yes, that's right, was the Crystal Room. Uh, so, whoops. Uh, yes, the game does in fact send you right back to the Crystal Room, uh, where you weren't supposed to get to, and even better than that, is it still has a crystal in it. Um, God knows why, um, but you can actually walk up to that crystal and get the key item, Darkness Crystal, the same one you were supposed to get out of the cave. Um, and because you were supposed to get this crystal, you weren't supposed to get that crystal in the, uh, the crystal room, of course. Um, the game considers this basically the same key item as the one in the sealed cave. I don't know why they actually put the, you know, the bona fide real thing in there. You'd think it would just be a picture, you know, a, a, d a dummy crystal, because you're not supposed to get it. But I, I guess it's just like, you know, the fastest way to get it to, to the crystal to kind of pop up there, float, display for you, is just to put the real thing there. I guess that, that kind of makes sense. Um, but it does cause you know, some issues, because you can get it. 
by doing that. And then, you know, you can you can proceed through the game as normal, as if you'd gotten the real thing out of the cave, because the game can't tell the difference. Um, and then you can just, so yeah, then you can just cut out the entire sealed cave portion of the game, uh, just completely. Um, so that, uh, that is interesting. Um, none of these bugs are quite as, uh, in-depth as the, and, uh, glorious, I suppose, as the 64 door hierarchy glitch. But they're still pretty interesting. Um, and this one in particular, this next one is pretty funny. Um, unfortunately, it actually only exists in the first release of the Japanese version, which I have heard is actually quite rare. Um, Square Enix must have cared about this glitch, because they actually, um, I believe they, they actually did a re-release, uh, and I think that the only, the only difference between the first and second version of the Japanese cartridges is the fact that this glitch was removed, so you have to imagine, I mean, um, back in the day, when you were actually talking about sending out, you know, real cartridges, that must have been expensive. Uh, that must have cost them some money. Uh, so whoever whoever left that bug in there, uh, I'm sure that uh, they were real happy with them. Um, but yeah, so you're not going to see this bug in this copy. Definitely not, because this was way fixed by the time this got to the US. Um, but this is the Underworld AI glitch. Uh, the way this works is um, basically... Uh, there is a flaw in the way that the party's location is stored. Shoot. Um, so when you, when you go to a location, it kind of, it, it stores, it, you know, it has this, uh, a bit in memory that tells the game, you know, what map you're on. And it uses this to load the, uh, the enemy AI tables, I believe. Uh, but, yeah, it, it just kind of uses to like load up the information the you know the, the monsters need to work. I don't know. I, I don't. Th I guess it doesn't affect what type of enemies you run into. I don't know how that works exactly, but uh, but basically, it, you can confuse the game about uh, about where where you are, um, because it kind of. I, I don't. Re I didn't really get into the technicals of it. Um, this is kind of a somewhat technical bug, you know, manipulate the bytes of your your map location. Um, but basically the outcome of it is if you go to somewhere like the, the Mist Cave, uh, there's a few locations that work, but this is the one I saw in the video. If you go to the Mist Cave and then without entering any other location, you go directly to the over to the uh, underworld, uh, you know, the, the underground area. Um, and you get into an encounter with a, uh, with an enemy in the underworld area. Um, basically their AIs will be completely broken. Um, and the practical effect of this is that, um, the enemies, instead of casting, uh, instead of attacking you, they will do nothing but cast stone on each other, uh, which is instant kill. So you can just sit there back and watch as I need to rest. You can sit back and watch as the enemies just cast stone and kill each other. Um, so that's pretty hilarious to watch, but uh, you're pretty much only going to be able to see it on YouTube because even even in Japan, like I said, the, that particular version of the game um, seems to be pretty rare is what, what I've heard. Uh, but that's another one that's l worth looking up just for the humor value of watching enemies uh, destroy each other with, with stone for just no apparent reason. Um, so that's that's uh, I like that one. Uh, I kind of wish I could do that. I would. That's that's a relatively inconsequential glitch that I would actually show you if I could. Um, you know, you're not like skipping dungeons or skipping parts of bosses or or completely breaking the game over your knee like the other glitches I've talked about. So I would be glad to show you that if it worked. Um, but it doesn't. It's you know, it's one of those unfortunate things that uh, they did actually catch it before it got to the states. Um, so let's see how we're doing here. Uh, about a half an hour in. Um, she better learn this spell quick, because I'm running out of glitches to talk about. 
Um, that won't be any good, will it? But, uh... The last one I've got on my list is the Reviving Enemies glitch. Um, and the way this works is... Um, it is actually possible to... Ah, we're moving up in the world. Moving up. Uh, moving on up. So let's see, she's got... That's not too bad. Um, so normally it's not possible to target dead enemies because they just vanish. But it is possible to bring enemies back to life if you time it right. Um, if you target an enemy with a life spell or a life item, right when they are about to die, um, you will actually target them with the spell or item. And uh, it'll go through like the, the revival animation. Um, and it will actually bring the enemy back to life. Um, but the enemy will... The enemy will be revived with zero hit points for some reason or the or another, just because of the the internal what you do it's of how the code works. Um, and so then that happens, and so of course with zero hit points, the enemy instantly dies, and you don't even actually get to see it like pop back up. It doesn't return to light. Like it doesn't. It doesn't return to screen, you just, what you see is just the life animation go off and then nothing happens. However, because the enemy technically died twice, you will get double experience from it. Um, so that's actually, it's kind of a useful glitch, uh, if you can take advantage of it. Um, which I'm, I'm not really planning to because it sounds kind of tedious and uh, I'm trying not to abuse glitches in this, in this run, we're doing it, we're doing it real, we're doing, uh, going through it like, you know, a real player would, uh, as opposed to me, who's, uh, secretly a game-playing robot. Um, but I'm, I'm trying my best to live up to my, the reason I was created. I'm, I'm uh, you know, not trying to use my hyper-advanced brain to beat this game in five minutes or anything like that. Um, you know, I'm just trying to, uh, play it exactly as one of you stupid slow humans would. You didn't hear anything I just said in the last minute or so. Just forget I said any of that. Anyway, um, what was I talking about? <laughs> it wasn't uh, it wasn't about being a robot or anything, because that would be stupid. Um, but no, we're we're actually out of glitches to talk about. Um, so then this would be a super timely moment for the game to pop up and say, uh, "Carlos, learn wall." But it's not going to do that, uh, so I guess I will have to revert back to my uh, normal rambling over my uh, usual planned rambling. Uh, actually, I do have something else to talk about. Uh, I, I did look up uh, info on um, Edge's spell list. Uh, as it turns out, Edge's spell list is pretty freaking boring. Um, when you get right down to it, ninja magic is not that exciting, and I'm sorry to say. Uh, it's kind of a minor minor footnote on his character. Uh, he does learn a uh, useful spell later called Mirage. Basically, it is exactly the same as the white magic image spell, um, so it can let you, you know, insta-dodge attacks. That's pretty useful, although that's more of a utility thing. It's not like you're not gonna, you're not going to get super psyched about getting a, co uh, uh, you know, a carbon copy of a white magic utility spell that you already had in the first place. But it's useful. It it increases his utility as a party member, and I'm not gonna I'm not gonna complain about that. Um, in the DS version, he actually learns three new elemental spells in levels 40, 50, and 60. Um, but as far as I know, those don't appear in this game. So uh, he's probably gonna learn that spell in level 30 something, um, Mirage, and then he doesn't learn anything new for the rest of the game. He doesn't learn like ninja. Meteor or something cool like that. Um, so that's a bit of a downer. I was hoping to discover, you know, discover some long, long unknown ultimate ninja magic spell that I'd never heard of before. Because you know, this game uh, has you know, surprised me a few times yet. Like how Palum can apparently learn Meteor, which was hilarious. Um, you'd think that a high-level party member like Edge wouldn't stop learning spells. Uh, you know, after level 38 or so. I think it was 38, but he'll probably learn it sooner. 
in this version of the game, because everyone learns their spells sooner in this version of the game. But no, uh, I guess that makes sense, because he's not really a magic-focused character. Um, it's just kind of funny that uh, they kind of introduce this extra branch of magic, like in the second half of the game that Edge and only Edge can learn. Um, and they even have this kind of unique cutscene built around him kind of learning extra spells. Um, but it's really not that exciting, it's not that interesting. Um, it's not its not like something to get really psyched about, it's really flashy, like, uh, like Ray is calling magic. Um, it's just rel relatively... I guess they were just kind of trying to... Uh, since he was introduced in the late game, they're kind of trying to give him utility to fill gaps in the party. Um, you know, you, giving him giving him Mirage was probably a part of that. Um, I also looked up what Pin does. Basically, it's paralysis. Um, the actual translation of the Japanese name is Shadow Bind, uh, and basically it is it says it paralyzes the enemy by pinning their shadow to the ground, um, which I think is kind of one of those. In ninja lore things um, in Japanese pop culture because I know they've got that too in Naruto um, so that kind of makes sense as, as you know in Jutsu uh, I don't know where that came from but that would be kind of interesting to uh, look into the origins of where that ability came from because uh, a lot of a lot of even in Japan a lot of the the pop culture view of ninjas has been very uh, fictionalized and mythologized um, uh, it's actually kind of interesting. Um, apparently the, the, uh, view of ninjas is, like, walking around in black suits. Uh, didn't actually come from real-life ninjas, not even close. Um, basically, this, that came from, uh, Kabuki Theater. Um, because the way this would, uh, I probably will get the details wrong, uh, but this is just what I remember uh, hearing or reading, but uh, basically, when you had uh, you know the theater, um, and you know you have when you have to like change the change props around and stuff, um, you know, change backgrounds and mess around and stuff. They had uh, stagehands who were dressed in black to blend in with the background, um, and so then you know they they'd walk around and mess with stuff and. People just kind of learn to ignore them because you're not supposed to think about the stagehands. They're they're not really part of the play. Um, or the I don't, I don't know what it, what is play the term you use for kabuki theater. It seems like something I ought to know more about. I don't know because um, it's actually there's a lot of really cool stuff about it and a lot of very interesting visual design uh, in in kabuki. But um, basically, so audience members just kind of learn to ignore these guys. Um, so you can kind of imagine how it might be kind of a twist or a, or a shock when some guy dressed in all black, who, you're who you've are who you been trained to ignore, just kind of walks up and like slits a guy's throat. Um, so that kind of became this thing where, um, because, you know, the people in black kind of blended in with the, the stage background, um, that they became kind of this stop character who was like a, a silent assassin that who, who would, uh, you know, surprise people. So that that is an entirely artificial trope that, that uh, you know, came from, from theater. Uh, it has nothing, I repeat, nothing whatsoever to do with real historical ninjas. Not even, not even a little bit. Uh, it's completely made up. Uh, it's... That's not going to stop the fact that whenever people think of ninjas, they're going to think of, you know, dudes all up in black. But, um, that is entirely fictionalized, uh, the same way uh, pirate accents are entirely fictionalized. Uh, but I'm not going to talk about pirate accents, because we don't even have a pirate in our party. That, that's getting even further out of field than I currently am right now. Um, so that's, I'm, I'm just not going to get into that, unless we see a pirate. If we fought a pirate, I might be, fe I might feel good about talking about pirates some. Um, you know, uh, then I'll, it'll only be one step removed from the actual game. Um, this really is becoming kind of a, a random podcast. 
uh, where I've, you know, there's nothing to talk about. Um, but, uh, like I said, this is an experiment. Um, honestly, whether I continue to show grinding sessions in the future will depend on how this shakes out. Uh, if this was super boring, you know, I mean, you don't have to watch the rest. I won't, I won't feel, I won't be insulted, um, if you think this is boring to watch. I haven't been even paying attention to what I've been doing for the last 40 minutes. Um, because I've been thinking about, uh, glitches and ninjas and kabuki theater. Um, you know, this is kind of the process of, uh, of grinding, is you, you find something else to think about most of the time. You know, uh, put on a video in the background or something. Uh, but you know, I've been, I've been, uh, I have been the entertainment for once instead of finding something else to do. Um, so ho hopefully this is this is interesting, um, and it's it's entertaining to listen to. Um, but you know, you the viewer shall be the judge of uh, of how how my future uh, future grinding will go because I I can easily do this off screen. Um, and it, it might be easier for me, um, just because I don't have to be... I don't have to th find ways to fill the space. Um, not to complain or anything. Um, I mean, if... But, if it is boring, I mean, then it, it would be better for everyone involved to just quietly do it off-screen. But I, I don't know. Um, I think I've done a pretty good job of finding something to chat about while we walk back and forth on these five squares of... Uh, real estate for uh, a couple hours. Um, I was kind of hoping that I could maybe make this quick, quick grinding, and then we could get to the cave on this episode. Really, I do. I want to get through this because I want to show you the boss of this level. You, you're gonna love it. I, I promise to you. It's the best. Um, but I, I can't do that till we're ready. And I probably will. What I should do is once I learn wall, I should actually do a test, a quick test to make sure I can actually kill these freaking doors. Uh, the fact that I haven't learned wall after two hours of grinding is probably a good sign that I have been underleveled for a while. Uh, I'm just gonna take that as a uh, as a sign that I have uh, I have not kept up in my leveling duties. Which I mean, y you can only expect so much of me while I'm uh, I'm trying to keep things brisk on camera, uh, so it's understandable that I wouldn't stop to grind, but, um, but, you know, we're finally doing it, uh, our, our long-awaited grinding session is finally here, and I think it's going alright, um, it's not like taking an ungodly amount of time, although, I don't know, in terms of entertainment purposes, uh, chilling in the same place for, uh, two episodes is a little, uh, it's, it's a little bit draggy, so I am, I am hoping I'm hoping against hope. I'm hoping for all I, for all the children of the world uh, that this will be the level where she learns it, and we can get on with the game. Uh, but if it's not, then at the very worst, it'll be the net level after that. Um, so, but we can hope that because uh, I'm I'm ready to move on. I'm excited. I'm excited to see the rest of the game. Uh, and, you know, show you what it's like it's deeper into the, the labyrinthine plot of Final Fantasy IV. Can't do that until we are competent enough to kill the monster walls. Or doors. Did I say wall? That's silly. We'd never be attacked by a wall. That's dumb. Um... But anyway, um, so we gotta, we're pretty close, we're, we're getting there, we are slowly but steadily getting there. Um, we've actually been running into a lot, a lot less bats it seems like lately, it has been, uh, you know, we can stop here, it's not bat country. Um, but uh, I don't. I, I do kind of hope, deep down, as annoying as it is, I hope for those big seven enemy uh, groups 
just for the sake of speeding things up. Um, cause those have gotta be worth a lot, and you can kill all the bats with one sweep of a, uh, of a, uh, giant fire god. So that's, that is nice. I, I like, I like murder. I like setting animals on fire. It, uh, it has entertained me ever since I was a child. You didn't hear that part either. Just, uh, just ignore everything that I say that doesn't sound goofy or silly or nonsense. Because it's, it's really not important. It's not something you, that you need to worry about. Not, not at all. Definitely not. Um, so, let's see. We're pretty... I, I think... Uh, man, I wish I'd found one more glitch. Uh, that would have... That would have probably filled up, you know, talking about Edge and Kabuki. That would have just about done it, but I'm just a little bit short to where I don't have, uh... I don't have any more material, and I'm kind of, kind of just turning to the game and begging, begging deep, deep from my, the bottom of my soul to uh, to let us kind of continue to proceed. Um, I don't know. She's a, so it could take as many as three levels. That would suck. Um, I think if I haven't done it by now, uh, if it's not the next level. Um, I will take care of the last two on camera just because I, I don't I don't want to make it like literal literal hours. It already is literal hours of grinding. Um, it's gone by qu pretty quick for me, but I have to be cognizant of the fact that I am in fact recording literal hours of footage that is repeating itself. Um, that is definitely a concern when you are trying to make entertainment. Whether it goes by fast for me has zero bearing whatsoever on whether it's going by fast for you. So I, I have to be mindful of that. Um, so if like, we just gotta cross fingers, um, the game has been pretty gracious so far in giving us. Uh, uh, I've got to remember not to uh, mix up the names. She's Carlos. Carlos right now. But yeah. Uh, uh, the game has been fairly gracious in giving us Carlos' spells earlier than is listed, and I really honestly wish that there was a spell list provided for this version of the game, which you'd think that there would be, because this is a version that everyone in the US probably first played. Um, but it, it, apparently it is exceptional in, in uh, granting, you know, apparently this is this one is a rare exception. All the other ones, in in the t the you know, the two D remakes and the two D other versions of the game, give you the spells at the same time, except this one. And no one in the in the at Final Fantasy wiki thought to cover. Th <sighs> gotta you gotta give me the difficult choices game, don't you? All right. None of these guys really have physical attacks anyway, so I'm going to make the very rare and potentially inadvisable decision to actually stick around and uh, and take these guys out. Um, th if this goes wrong, you know, you can say, I, I told me so, I to yeah, I told me so, um, because I did. I don't know, maybe I should... Oh, that's not f uh, But see, that's the thing, is you can't even blame that on being... This is actually the one encounter where it actually legitimately doesn't matter about real position. God damn, there's so many freaking bats. And they all take... I'm pretty sure that the game does stop. Because, like, if, if it was proceeding at normal speed, I think it wouldn't... It wouldn't drag on this long. I don't know. Cecil, are you gonna give a turn? Give a turn to heal Rydia? Just need one turn, come on. Okay, I stand corrected. There are some physical attacks in there. If they take uh, Carlos out, I'm gonna be having a bad day. If we could just hit the Batgirl. It's up to you, Kane. You gotta do this. You gotta do it, man. Okay. 
Sorry, but uh, you guys are about to have a really bad day. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'll shut up now. Come on, let's make this quick. We can, we can gain this spell. We can do it. Hold your breath. God damn it! Ugh, oh, jeez, okay. Well, I mean, you can probably anticipate what the next half hour or so of my playthrough will look like. You know, there's not going to be any surprises in store. So I will come back to you a couple levels higher. Um, in, uh, in all, in all, but what's, what's the, what's the last word of the phrase I'm trying to complete here? In, in, in all likelihood, yes, that, that sounds right. In all likelihood, uh, and with, with good fortune, I will, uh, I will be ready to proceed into the cave, because I think this is more than enough grinding. I've done this for five levels, and I am sorry to you, audience, that that has been the last two hours of footage, but, um, from here on, we will be proceeding doing things that aren't grinding and aren't bats. Except for the bats that we'll be fighting on the way to the boss. So actually, there will be quite a few more bats, but that's it's not really... I'll, I'll just... I'll see you later. Uh, we will we will be back with no more grinding. I promise. So I'll see you there.